Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is your first time at my channel, welcome. Today's video is going to be about creating uh, flats and flat darks. Uh, this is my Xenostar 61 underneath here, and in the imaging train I have my new ASI 294mm monochrome camera and the ZWO uh, 8 position filter wheel. I took a couple exposures the other night uh, once I got my back focus set um, and I also took some darks. I'll do another video on that in particular because I want to show some of the uh, darks that have the amp flow I knew would be present. Um, my setup for this is what I'm using right now but I've made a decision to move to a different type of uh, light panel. I'll show you that when I drop down for the rest of the video here. Uh, but right now I have a double over uh, white Nike t-shirt. I try to pull the wrinkles out. I have a uh, rubber band around it to try to hold it taut. I have three pieces of uh, white paper to add an, an additional diffusion uh, to the light from the tablet. And my main concern about my uh, Galaxy tablet and the application I'm using called Flatch, you can get it on the uh, Android store, is that I don't have an even uh, distribution across the panel. So, um, and let me drop down into my chair and we'll do the rest of the video and I'll show you uh, Nina. Okay, I'm comfortably in my chair um, on my desktop, remote desktop into my laptop and that's where the camera and filter wheel are connected and in full disclosure, uh, this is like the second or third take uh, one of the takes, <clears throat> I actually left the lens cap on, but we won't go there. So anyway, this is uh, Nina Flat Wizard. And um, the other night, I made a decision to move to Nina. I received several recommendations from uh, viewers. And I was having a challenge getting images displayed in astrophotography tool the other night. I did accomplish achieving back focus with my Xenostar 61 and the ASI 294mm uh, uh, monochrome camera and with filter wheel in the image train. So I think I'm pretty good there. I was able to take 10 exposures, two minutes long, in the Rosette Nebula area. And then I took out at a 40 darks. Um, I'm going to look to process them. I'm sure I will not see much because of the very limited integration time with the H-alpha filter. But anyway, um, if something uh, develops, uh, I'll share that with you and probably do another uh, video around that. So um, this is the Flat Wizard. You've seen how I'm uh, trying to approach creating flats with the tablet, pieces of paper, and the um, doubled over t-shirt. I just want to quickly mention that I ordered the Pegasus Astro Flatmaster, uh, the 150. Uh, I should be getting that within the week. Uh, it's dimmable. It's, um, I believe it's controllable through an ASCOM driver. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that and maybe I'm really trying to do what I need to do to get good calibration frames. I buy into and believe that if I can optimize the quality of my calibration frames, it will help eventually the outcome of my images uh, once I'm uh, imaging with this uh, new camera. Uh, the other thing I ordered was the uh, ZWO electric uh, automatic focuser. You know, I've decided to increase the complexity by moving to a dedicated AstroCam and on top of it a monochrome one where I'm be using filters. Each filter that I use will need to be focused. Uh, so I thought, why not $200 invest in this uh, automatic focuser? I did look at the Pegasus Astro, uh, I think it's Cube 2. I got a lot of good uh, remarks and reviews, but at $100 more, I thought, let me start with the ZWO and uh, see if it will be a, a good solution for me or not. And uh, I also got uh, my set of LRGB uh, filters, and I just like to share these things in videos as they happen, so if you're following the channel or you're thinking about subscribing, you'll know what the future content's going to be based upon. 
So, uh, okay, let's get back into Nina. Just real quickly for you, those of you that, uh, that may not be familiar with it, um, this is the uh, camera panel. You can see my camera is connected. Uh, I'm currently uh, cooling the camera. And again, my understanding based upon the Charles Bracken Deep Sky Imaging uh, Primer book, uh, your flats and flat darks can be taken at any temperature. However, I've decided to take them at the temperature that I used when I took my uh, 10 exposure, 10 two minute exposures the other night. Um, you'll see that I'm using 120 as the gain and 30 as the offset. Um, this is my starting point. I imagine that those values may change over time as I gain experience, but that's where I started the other night. So since that's what I use for the lights, I want to make sure I use that for the flats. Here is the uh, panel for the focus uh, for the filter wheel, and uh, as you can see, it's an eight-position wheel. Uh, I have the H Alpha filter, the only filter I have uh, other than these that I haven't loaded up yet in the filter wheel. Um, so that's in position number eight right now. So let's go into the Flat Wizard uh, panel. Um, and uh, again, uh, for this demo, I've already taken my flats and my flat darks. Uh, I took 50 and 50. But for this demo, I'm just going to take 5 and 5. And um, what you'll see is when you start to take your flats, it'll... It'll take, it'll take the flats and then it'll stop and tell you to, to put your lens cap on uh, for your uh, flat darks. Uh, to that point, I'm in single mode here, but as I move into loading all the filters into my filter wheel, my expectation is I will use this uh, uh, feature more uh, where I can set the uh, parameters on and off for the various filters that I might be using that night. Um, I, one thing I really like about uh, Nina, uh, of what I've seen so far, it's a very clean interface. I really like that. Um, so let's go. Okay. So again, shows the gain, single mode, H alpha filter. Now, flat minimum exposure, I have it set to a half second, and I have the flat max exposure to 20 seconds. I believe that was the defaults. And there's a lot of conversation that you want your flats to be at least one second or more. We'll see what uh, this turns out to be when we, uh, when we take these uh, flats. Um, the flat step size, what happens is uh, Nina will take three exposures trying to determine the optimal exposure based upon the parameters I've set below. And then it will um, have... Uh, understood what the right exposure time is and then it'll go on and it'll take the the flats so for now as my starting point I'm using the histogram mean target of 32768 or 50 uh, percent my understanding that'd be equivalent of the histogram being uh, on the center of your histogram uh, graph whether or not again that is the right value I don't know and again this is a 14-bit camera but somewhere in here, 16 bits comes in, so that's why the scale is like 65,000. This is information I need to uh, learn. Again, I made a decision to add complexity into my environment by going with monochrome and filters because I, uh, I'm in a Bortle um, 8 zone and uh, the light pollution uh, was really hampering me when I was using my DSLR. So... Um, I have a lot of knowledge to gain yet, but I'm having fun trying to gain it. And like many things, you find different people have different opinions, and you just have to uh, sort through all that for yourself and uh, make some decisions of what you're going to start with, and then look to understand if you change a parameter, what are you actually doing uh, in the process. So again, all right, so let's continue on. Histogram uh, mean target of uh, 50% and I'm allowing for a 10% uh, tolerance. So let's see what happens here. All right, so it has set a 
target exposure of 1.61 seconds. And so it has taken the five, um, all right, it took the five flats. Now it stops and lets me know I uh, need to cover my scope. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, scope is covered. Let's go ahead. I'll hit OK. And I'll put in this video what the error screen would look like if, uh, based upon the parameters that you set over here, uh, the flat wizard cannot find the right exposure. So I'll... Uh, I'll put a view of that. Maybe it's a still. I'm not sure what I'll, I'll do. Okay, so we're done. So now let's go in and look at the data. Again, I had previously uh, captured some images. And what is the time now? Oh, we're about 4.09. Okay, so this is... Oh, that's the dark. That's from the other night. So let's go into the flat first. And let me find... Since I had already captured uh, what I needed for my calibration frames... Uh, let's go down here. So we're we're basically down here. Um, so there is um, a flat, and then if I bring up the histogram, we'll see where the uh, histogram is at towards <clears throat> the center of the screen. And then there's some information up here: the minimum, max, and uh, standard deviation, and what the average. Uh, ADU setting was when it captured the image, I believe. So, um, and um, I don't know if this value here has something to do with the full well depth and and those type of uh, um, specifications or or data points or whatever. But this again, as a beginner, I'll, I'll learn. So as we kind of move through these. Uh, we see what the um, what the flats look like. Oh, probably I'm going the wrong direction because I'm probably going into my other ones. But if we put this away, uh, and I've got some spots here and those type of things, uh, so I need to understand. And again, I believe the flats deal with vignetting, um, so they're important to removing uh, 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 vignetting. Vignetting. All right, so let's go into the darks, uh, or rather the flat darks. And let's get down into the time range that was down in here. And so, I don't know. I don't know what this is supposed to look like, but this is what it looks like. And then if we bring the histogram up, uh, we're all the way down over here. And again, uh, some values that I need to understand. Uh, but I basically followed... Uh, the procedure that the flat wizard asked me to uh, uh, to follow. Again, my understanding is the flat darks or dark flats are taken at the same exposure uh, as your flats. So um, that's about it. Again, um, going forward, I'll be using uh, Nina. It's free, as you know. Um, reasonably good documentation that I could find. Definitely there's uh, forums where you can get information on Nina, but I have found it pretty straightforward to use. Um, so this is what I'll be use, using going forward. So again, uh, that's about it. I just want to thank everyone that takes the time to uh, make a comment or ask a question. Uh, through the comments, I'm already learning. Uh, I'm correcting, uh, uh, I'm course correcting, uh, I'm learning what I thought is true is not necessarily true, and I'm getting up my learning curve just a little bit uh, quicker because uh, of the people that take the time to comment and uh, share their knowledge. That's uh, greatly appreciated. So I hope this is helpful. If you uh, are thinking about Nina, uh, here's a little bit more about it when it comes to the Flat Wizard. Uh, I really like it, uh, easy to use, and I'm looking forward to using it in the future. And uh, hopefully within the next week or two, now that I've got the back focus uh, established, um, 
and uh, I can start producing some images once we get some clear skies and then I can start to share those images with you. So thanks again for dropping into the channel. Other than that, till next time.